All right, guys. So this is the lathe. Um, the lathe is used to cut anything that is round or spherical. So you know things like rods or cylindrical parts. Um, this is how you cut them. And the way that a lathe works is you have a piece and you put it in this, which is called the chuck. So if you basically use this tool, turn it. You can loosen. There we go. Tighten your piece like that. And you have a tool, something like this, or this. You put it here. This tightens it, so now it can't move up or down. And if you want to adjust the height of this, you can just turn this thing right here, and that'll move it up or down. Once you tighten it, you close it, and then you turn it on. And then it's back down to turn it off. Um, and you can also move it, move this down, and it'll make it rotate in the other direction. So if you move it up, it'll turn counterclockwise, which is usually what you want. Um, whereas if you turn it down, it goes clockwise. This is called the carriage, and you can move it this way by turning this big uh, handle right here. And you can move it in the Y direction by turning this. And if you want to do any type of diagonal cuts, you can turn this one right here, and then this is for if you want to drill things or ream, or if you just have a really long rod, you want to have something that can like hold it in place so that it's not lopsided when it turns. And so the way you control this is, uh, if this is loose, then you can move it. If it's tight, you can't move it. And once you, you know, put your you're drilling, you can use this to tighten it. And then once you secure this, you can't turn this anymore. So that's how that works. Um, and then for these uh, dials right here, these two and this control your spindle speed, so your chuck speed. And so if you look at these buttons on here, they correspond to a different line and a different box that shows the speed on here. Um, so right now, this would be at 540. And down here, these control how fast the tool carriage, the carriage moves if you have it on automatic feed. So for example, if I were to turn this on right now, And it stops, and that was it was moving pretty slow there, right? So I could just turn these corresponding to a different speed on here, mm. and it would speed up. Um, this, yeah. So these uh, these two numbers on here, this shows your diameter, and this shows your x y position, basically, of your carriage, and so. Um, yeah, and then over here, this is the e-stop. Pull this if you have an emergency. You can also press this down here. There is also a emergency stop of sorts. But the best way to stop it is to just use this. Yeah, make sure you work. clean things up in here. Oh, and the most important thing is that this tool can just run all the way into the chuck when it's turning. There's nothing that prevents, you know, this from contacting this. So right now I could literally just touch it. I'm not going to, but you know, you don't want that to happen. Um, I wish there was a built-in mechanism that, you know, prevents this from hitting this, but there isn't. And so you have to be very careful. When you're cutting and you're getting very close, you know, sometimes you don't notice, you get really close 
you have to make sure that this does not touch this. Otherwise, the lathe will break. So that's the most important thing to remember with the lathe. But yeah, that's all. Right. All working form pickups. So those are all same rod end, same like same tabs. Those are all the same. We have one other set for our like, master cylinders, and that's a different dimension. So like. All bars just happen to be used for the same purpose. If they're used for different purposes, then they'll have like different dimensions. Oh, so you, the, the standard one is just for the wishbones? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll set the angle on this first. Here we have about 10 degrees. So I'll grab a big wrench at one point. Where'd it go? Oh, okay. So you set the angle of this top using these two bolts. So I'll go ahead and tighten on it and then loosen both. Now you can usually just tilt this. Now on here, if you look, you have little ticks. So you have one orange one here that indicates where you're winding up. So about 10 degrees. Okay, so that's about the right position. So I'll lock this in. Okay, so our angle is set now, so you can basically run on that axis using like this. Each take is about. So, okay. Just now we'll probably go ahead and fix the angle up. <laughs> I use the compound and take it out real quick. I'll use this as a reference just so I make sure it's aligned with the figure. So let's get a hold on it. With the 10 degree angle, let me see, it's offset a little bit. Are you done with the wrench? Uh, I need to just tighten it. Okay. Yeah. I think this will give us enough room. Maybe a little more. Okay. I don't know the best practice on this, but in, in general, I just use the chalk. This is also like perfectly Okay. <clears throat> So now like our way this itself is set up, I'll go ahead and put the stock back in. Okay. I'll go ahead and set the height with this. Have you guys accepted the height before? Huh? You guys accepted the height? Okay. I'll go ahead and get this height right. perpendicular to the surface you're cutting. So I might actually try a different tool. And here I just have like all different angles. I think probably the sharpest one will be good. Yeah. So I'm gonna use this one. And then you can also angle the tool, the tool holder. It's not as rigid, but I think this will probably be fine. It's angled slightly out. 
and then I'll just tighten it down. So if you look at the angle, see like there's 10 degrees here and then this angle, which they're all perpendicular, but they're pretty close. So this will probably work for cutting the tape as well. So I'll go and tighten this tool. Wait, so if you like change that, then it changes the 10, the 10 degrees? This doesn't affect it. I just want to make sure I have like a good cutting edge. Oh, okay. Cool. As long as you're only making point contact the whole time, uh -huh. then you should be fine. Okay. Some of the, some of these aren't tight, and so they actually move a little bit. Uh -huh. And so if it's like more perpendicular, it has less tendency to shift. Mm. So I'll also visually look at the tool height on this one. about right so now I'll take this out and we have two tools now I'll go ahead and turn our outer diameter first so we have a drawing real quick what does it say it's uh, it's point to okay. so let me get my caliper Can I get to 0.75? Yeah, okay. I'm getting, make sure I'm getting the right diameter. It's out, reading out. Okay. Once those not drop, then I can just like send it all the way. Right. So now I should be cutting kind of diameter. I'll do one more cut to see if it's accurate. And if it is, then I can just do it. Wait, so why was it not reading the diameter on there before? So it was like off center? So I guess a couple ways it'll happen is if you zero on not a perfect surface uh -huh. or if it deflects from the machine, you should do like a reasonable pass and then measure the machine diameter and offset by that amount, you'll get it to be pretty much exact. 
of like if it deflects for some reason or another or something isn't tight, then uh -huh. it won't read the same. I see, I see. But now I have them reading the same value. Okay. But it should be good now. surface it should be pretty close so it's 638 and a half ish so it's in 2000 so let's get the, the ID here okay and what's the remaining So this is reading, my zero is on this face. Let's see. Oh, here we are. How many of you crank out an hour? A lot. I need like 50 over a day or two. That's like how many we need for the <laughs> You want to just like streamline the process, it's all like, you crank it out. I'm thinking about the best way to get this next time. Because I could just do really precisely this way, or I could be less precise and just take off the end. I'll probably just go to the exact depth though. So it's 0.32 in, so I'll go to like, like 0.3, and then I'll do the rest of it by hand if I'm handy. So this is at 064, and let's go to 6. Probably drop the feed. Just a little bit tighter. Yeah. I'll drop the feed a little bit. So I'll go to ASX like <laughs> And then 26. I'll do one trial in here. Yeah. Yeah. 
general, like aluminum 800 and 1200. And then I was using ASXing or DSXing. DSXing I can break chips pretty easily. ASXing is, how do you break chips? But it's like reasonable speed that I can like read off and take the battle back. So the final one is 0.41. I'll cut one to f 450 and then I'll double check. I think it's 450. If it is, then we can just go ahead and go to full depth. It's not that oversized by one thou, just so I get the exact diameter. I'm going over my one down. Okay. Final depth was 0.32. Final depth was 0.32. Final depth was 0.32. So now we should have like the whole profile done. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and measure just to be safe. But let's see. This should be. 411, so it's 1,000 over right now, and this is 639, so 1,000 under. I'm gonna grab a file real quick, just so we can clean this up, and I'm gonna cut the taper. Let me grab the file. Wait, he's like a magician on this show. <laughs> this really See how nice. fast he does that? Yeah. This is really nice. How do I become like this? How do I become like this? the point of sitting in at 10 degrees at this point. <clears throat> he's gonna go in once he starts doing the angle. Isn't that what the paper is gonna do? Danny, why don't you go that fast? Huh? Why don't you go that fast while you're doing everything? Because I don't have this bit. Uh, I think oh, really? so. It's because he's gonna use the other one. That's already that he got it to the special bit. Wait, so where's the paper? Is it like here? Yeah, it's gonna be basically. So this right here is the washer part. This is where he's gonna cut off. Oh, okay. And then he's gonna take the right thing. Wait, is this just cut with like a drop saw? Uh, no, you can also cut it. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, you can do it with it. Are you recording in black and white? No, my phone is just in black and white, but it's in color. For filing, I was taught you put one arm up here, you run your hand up. I can be scary. Arms <laughs> properly, but that's like the while way it's running. Last guy taught me. What? While it's running? Yeah. Oh okay. <laughs> Damn. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now we're gonna cut the taper. I'll get our other tool out. Are these electric tools? Yeah. yeah. These are like 40 bucks for a full set, so these are definitely worthwhile. They're and nice. they each give you different let's, angles. Let's, uh, let's send the order for that. Do you have a link to those? Or? Uh, Amazon Anytime Tools. Let me see. Oh. This is the one. Let's take a picture. Then you can get half inch or uh, three eighths. And these are all three eighths. Yeah. That's awesome. Open the uh, paper. Let me see the So the way we're gonna do this is on the cone spacer, there's like an edge and then it starts to taper. So past that edge, there's gonna be one point. The cylinder and then you start the taper, we're gonna set that point as our zero. So I'll tap off the back face to get a zero. So <clears throat> that's one zero. Is repeatable. So that's one zero, and then we're offset 80 thou from that surface. So I'll offset 80 thou. And zero. So now this is the final depth for this part, and then I'll come in and tap it on this face as well. 
I can run the machine while I do this, but I'll just do it off for now. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and run it actually for this one. So I'll turn it on. Come toward me. I'll zero when I hit it. So now I have the zero zero that is that point. I can just cut tapers up to zero zero. So now I'll back out on this axis relatively far. Come to zero zero. And then in theory, if I were to just do one cut straight through, I would cut the entire taper. That's a really good path, so we're not going to do that. So instead, I'll offset a little bit. Turn on this axis. That's why so I make contact. And then I still want to do a zero on there. So I'll do like 10 power increments. Do 10 power, and then do a full cut. There's no auto feed here, so you have to be kind of continuous in the way you turn it. So I'll do no time now. If it is tighter, then you'll have to do this. This is not happens to be a bit of 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 a You can see the surface now. Give it a slight taper, give it a small diameter, big diameter. Now we'll drill and then we can go ahead and part. That's so awesome. It's pretty nice. Yeah. Take this out. Mm -hmm. So what he did was like, he set the zero here, and then, and when you're going in from here, just like slowly go out until you reach the zero. Yeah, so I set the zero right on this point here. Uh -huh. And then as long as I do passes and end up at zero, zero, I will like always cut straight to this. Okay. And you set it at a certain depth, right? Yeah, so I, I touch off the back face, and then whatever width this like little cylinder is, I just offset by that. Mm -hmm. So it happened to 80 thou, so I got the surface off by 80 thou. And I, I tapped the surface while I was running, and then I have a zero. Yeah. Huh. You also need to run the wave in reverse when you do it this way. So you think about like the cutting direction. So it's rotating that way. So if you're cutting from the back, you run in reverse. If you're cutting from the front, this way you run it forward. So uh, it doesn't really matter with these tools because you can kind of cut in either direction. But uh -huh. you should some tools that matter. Because like the surface finish will honestly be pretty similar. Okay. With this tool, I've never like seen a huge difference. But in, you should technically run in reverse and go from the back. I see. So it's always rotates to cut that way. Okay. I don't know where my center drill went. This search drill. 
I'll just center drill and then drill it and then part. Okay, center drill speed. I can do as high as 800. I'll drill around like 540 probably. So I'll just center drill around there as well. I just drove like a precise depth. I'll show you how to do that. Um, actually, it's point four, right? Total depth. So, the way we'll do this is I'll get close. I'm going to drill in just the head. So, let's get it. Let's go in. I'll back out. Now, what I can do is on this tool, on the tail stock, you'll see like increments. Yeah. I'll put it at one inch. I'm gonna nudge the tail stock until the bit is just fully in there, and I'll zero it, so I'll lock it, and back out. So anything on here past one is actual drill depth. Okay. I'll just do half an inch. So I'm here. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna nudge I should be good apart. I might. Oh, we're oh, fine. So, parting tool. Oh, okay. Pretty cool, right, Dan? How do we set this length? Yeah, but like, how did you? Oh, you just look. Oh, okay. So, yeah, what's the thing that say here? Then you push it to it. Okay. Now, a party tool. That's the correct way to use this with paper. We have a long. Let me go grab it. Okay. We need paper. Paper. I just wonder if you ask for dating, you think your mind is expanded? Yeah, it's not that. Uh, you kind of follow the drive. <laughs> what, what is he trying uh, to do right now? Yeah, I mean, that's the hardest part, right? Well, not really. <laughs> that's the hardest part to think about in your head. Because yeah. angles and shit is like. Wait, why do you need paper? So, the correct way to actually indicate I'm a part instead of just like hitting the face oh, yeah, is yeah, to yeah. use paper. Which, it's not really necessary, but I'll go ahead and just demonstrate it. So I'll get to the parting tools right on that surface, not on a bird. I'll wiggle a paper between the parting tool and the part. Once I feel friction, I can take it out. Zero uh -huh. on that axis. <clears throat> and paper, like printer paper is four thou thick. So I'll offset by four thou, pretty exact. But I think this parting tool is 96 thou wide. I'll double check. 96 thou. So now the edge of my parting tool is right on the edge of the cone spacer. And I can essentially just come over by the full depth of the part. So 0.4, kind of exact. I'll go a little bit over so we can grab it back in the jaw and then finish it off. <clears throat> I'll still like add 25 thou to that probably. That should be good. I'll part it at 370. Come on. Should be good.
part. It should be pretty hot. Yeah, quite hot. <clears throat> I'll take a stock out. In general, if you don't really care about this, like, thickness the top here, you can just part it at the exact point. If you want to be a clean finish, you can part it over though, and that, and that's also better. I'll go ahead and rebound it and just clean up the, the size of the top. So we're at 114 thou, final is 80 thou, so take off 34. Yeah, I did that. When you were setting your height, is it literally just based on if it looks as close as possible? So if you're using like a turning tool, yeah. then you can face it in this direction yeah. and you can actually see if the height's correct or off. <clears throat> For like a parting tool, if it's too high, it just won't cut. Oh, okay. And so I look at it's too high, so I set it down until it's at about midway and then I cut with it and it works. So oh. I know it's probably fine then. <clears throat> so the jaws are always steel and this part's aluminum. So if I just clamp it in, it's going to be going to get scratched. It might not be worth trying paper because we don't, if we don't really care about the tolerances, then it isn't really relevant. I'll see if I can get paper around it when we do this. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Tighten this. Okay. If this slips at all, then we're going to really scratch the surface. So I'm going to go a little bit tight, but not too much because you can crush the aluminum really easily. <clears throat> I think we'll be fine. Yeah. So I'll put on whatever tool we're using this. Go back to 1200. And then I'll move the I'll take down the 100 cal first. I'll tap it for zero. take off like some exact value and get to final depth. So we're at min 94, so take off 93, 94. So I'll just take off another 14 valve and we should be done. You have to deburr it because we faced it, but I just want to pass it around. Mm -hmm. Did you give up? Because when we made it, it looked worse than it was before. And like, there was no, like, and then we started questioning, like, why does Nathan want us to do my thing? Like, we'll do this. We good? That's it? Uh, this one? Yeah. When you said deeper, it just means that oh, there's just weird differences between this in the and this in the uh, uh, You can see from the top that like it's literally just. Oh yeah. I think so. The new ones you buy are just like, Did he like round the edges too? Did he round the edges? Uh, you can follow them or oh. deburr them. You don't have to deburr. You can also oh, drill them right after. Because if you don't, if you want to just like do it as quick as possible, you just part it at the right length and be done. Mm -hmm. If you want to be like really exact though, you can also just cut them off, basically in this direction, then drill and read them. Because it's fine, it kind of helps. Because then you have no burn, so you can as quick as possible. I'll just go back to the 
It's all within plus or minus five foul, so okay, it should be pretty good. <clears throat> if so, I have this mount on the stock, and then I know from the drawing, I know the depth from the edge of the part down to this face, and then from this face down to like, this edge that separates <clears throat> the taper and the cylinder. <clears throat> so, if I nudge off the back face. Offset by that thickness, I know I'm on the right plane of this axis to cut right on this edge, and then I nudge it from this well, the back direction and touch off this surface. So now I have a zero, a zero, zero that's set right on the edge between the two, uh, the two like, discrete segments. And then what I do is I back out some amount, so I just get basically out of the way. I can back out on this axis a lot and I go back to zero, zero. And so now, in theory, this always cuts on a straight line. So on a zero zero here, the tool is just backed out. So I just turn this axis, I would go right through this point. Now I'll cut the full taper. And <coughs> it's a big pass, so at that point, you basically offset a bit, you do a small pass, and keep coming inward until you hit zero zero. For the Y, are you zeroing like the, from this part, or are you zeroing like the top part? Uh, from this face. The top part, okay. Yeah. Because like, in the end, that's if you don't zero off this face, you don't have an accurate measure of how big this cylinder is. So as long as you go off this face and says zero zero from the back face, you know that this cylinder's fine and this cylinder's fine, and the taper's just gonna follow based on the accuracy of like however you set your angle. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Do you think you might be able to like have Danny do a test pass or do a like do a practice run and then you like watch over and make sure he's doing it right? Yeah. Then you wanna do a, the same same exact one or you wanna do a different one with a different angle? I'll try to do that one and see how it improves. Sure. I'm gonna go to the bathroom.